Hello, friends. Hi, welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're going to recap you real quick. Now, we are in the middle of building our huge Hyper Adobe Roundhouse, but we happened to meet a certain Australian named Hayden who wanted to help us work on the Hyper Adobe House. He flew all the way out here. We ended up doing a Super Adobe Dome workshop with him and built an adorable little dome in one week with a bunch of awesome people. This dome will be used for a guest house, and uh, yeah, it is big enough to put a bed in. We promise, yes. Uh, so, the video you're watching today is day three of the seven day workshop, so we're going to be putting out a video for each day of the workshop, and then we'll continue to make videos about finishing the dome and working on the house. So, in December, we have lots going on. We're going to be doing videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, mm -hmm. three videos a week, so keep an eye out. Now, let's get to that workshop build because I want to see how far we get on the dock. Gonna fly away, but it all be gone. Gonna find a life like this where I Good morning, everybody. We're back for the third day of the Super Adobe Workshop. See our progress last night. Looking really good. Today, we're excited because uh, everybody that is going to be here today has already been here. So that means uh, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time doing catch up and like explaining things to people. It means we can really get into it today and hopefully get a ton of bags done. So let's see what we can do. Today, before we laid any new layers, it was time to put the door frame in. This would help us set the floor height inside and as you'll see, provided an important anchor point for that fixed compass to start stepping in the bag soon. Very good. Anti-clockwise. Oh, we go clockwise. <laughs> yep. Put it out like that. And we need to get, a, get this rectangular form in there. So the other one would go down here and come down like this. We all feeling good? Yep. All right, one. Two, three. So I've just put that in at that nine and a half inch mark. So now I've got a long, a long area to be able to play with because this form's going to come in or out. We're very unlikely to be perfectly placed as we are. So I'm going to make the measurement here off this bag, but it'll eventually either come in or out. So I'll need to move the screw again. Any of you guys over there be able to see? this corner in a little bit so we'll just go one two three yep that's fine see how much it's come in from down yeah. there oh yeah we stepped in that much so that's around the height of that but that's way too um way too guessworky to say oh that's about that high so now i've mimicked the height of that door with the height of this oh come on come on <laughs> That's exactly perfect. That is crazy. What on earth? All right, I said that we wouldn't be able to do that and we've definitely done it. But where it was the first time, yeah. when it was back, we'll just imagine it's like that. So very often it could be like this. And so therefore we'd need to bring the form in to meet there. So that's very common. It'd be like that or it'd be like this. So you also need to check the corners in case they curl in and they miss miss the corners of it and that's looking all good and we've got a few metal stakes bang on that is awesome we've got a few metal stakes somewhere <laughs> they were there they got moved they got moved. where they, they move Wonder about the adherence of the la layers. The barbed wire in this does oh, the okay. adherence, oh, and okay. this one, it's actually very non-adherent. The two two layers, it's really slippery, so it's the barbed wire that that holds it all in there. Especially when you're up the top and it wants to fall in. 
and you always have to go from the longest point of the buttress. So this is a curve, this inner one is shorter, this is longer. And we found out yesterday when we're measuring the bag, stay as well to the outside as you can comfortably. So um, barbed wire happens in the middle of the bag, but, but bag happens on the outer edge. <laughs> Video my struggle. It's not a struggle, you're handling it like a champ. Oh, person in this bucket chain. Um, maybe you can stay down there on the top and fill buckets and pass them to Leslie. Look at that mate, it's gorgeous. Sometimes I do just a little, little tuck there if that's a bit loose. And then when we get the tamp, you've got to hold it on an angle or whatever you end up using. Like that. You may have also noticed this tiny arched form over on the side of the building. It's not a window, it's not a dog door, but it is for a tiny wood stove. Lots more on that in future videos, but for now, we just need to lock it in place and bag around it. Dad. Yeah. What's your favorite word in my? <laughs> my favorite word? I don't know. What kind of a question is that? I have no idea. Like, what is it? Why? Why is it fun to say? <laughs> I, I can't think of anything. Don't put me on the spot like this. Okay, for those of you that grew up with computers, Windows PCs back in the day. Wingdings. What the heck is a wingding? Wingding is a font that's just a bunch of weird characters. Like like little icons and symbols and stuff. And I call them wingdings. <laughs> All right, we got another course done. Uh, Ashley is finishing lunch up. We're gonna try to get one more done before lunch is ready. So I gotta go get back on the mixer and get this done. Start off by just folding this excess un um, just down. Yep, so our new center point is actually gonna be that. Right. So that's gonna be the center of our bag. So you can tuck all of this under that that's way. Right. Yep, mm, yep, beautiful. We call this like defining the new face. So that's gonna be one edge of our new final face and that'll be the new final face. Okay. And all of this and all of that needs to get tucked under that new face. Okay. So you can start up here and start up high and start tucking. So start tucking under that face, as in like this. Yep. 
like that. And you go hand by hand down, one hand, one hand, one hand, one hand. And then the most important is this bottom bit. Beautiful. One hand on this side, one hand on this side. Pinching okay. each side. Gotcha. Beautiful. And then pull up. We're going to pull the whole bag up. Yep. And we're going to tuck under and you're going to feed it down under towards me. Let's have a look at this fold. What do you reckon? Nice. Ooh. Look how fat that is. Look at the doggies. Oh, so yeah. what are we going to do? So we go like this. It's easy to fix. Get your foot again and pop it right here. And then we we'll lift up the this. Crush. Yep. We lift this up and you keep your foot there. And we're just going to dance that mix yeah, down. Yeah. Beautiful. Now you can slide your foot out. Yep. And, and then we'll lift it like and drop it again. We'll lift it and drop it again. I see. Yep. And we'll have another left. One, two. We'll go once more. Let's have a look. Look at that. Square. It's way better, eh? Yeah, it's yep. So that's how you get those really nice, nice beginnings. Hey, uh, where are you in this video? Well, um, you may know that we had delicious food during these workshop yes, days and I was busy all morning making food. And then after we ate, I had to go to the grocery to prepare for the next four days. So you didn't get to work on the dome at all no. on this day and somehow you didn't get filmed at all. Nope. I'm really sorry. It's totally fine. I don't fine. know what happened. I was at the grocery and busy. Okay. So if you're wondering where Ashley is in this video, she was busy. Yep. So you dig down where you know you're taking your soil from and feel free to take a lot of different tests because that'll take that'll show you a lot. Very inexpensive, you need some old jars. Fill about halfway with soil and then um, all the way to the top with water and you shake it really vigorously for quite a few minutes, like two minutes is good, really vigorously and then you pop it down on the table. And then a few things are going to happen. In less than 10 seconds the rocks are just going to go poop to the bottom and then uh, your sand is going to settle. Your silt, it's tiny, really, really round sand. And that's not what you want. It's the worst thing to build with. And there's a really big distinction between those. Because clay can take up to weeks. Jonathan made these three weeks ago. A couple of weeks, yeah. Yep. I used this one up by accident. But the clay, if I go like this, it's still flexible there. So it's still settling. But basically you want to get it um, as clear as possible. This is really good and an and acceptable amount of um, clarity to the water. Rocks are big and jaggedy. And then sand is just smaller forms of that. And then silt, we don't want any of, um, but it'll, it'll turn up here and there. So all these three don't absorb water. And that's a massive thing that we need to get clear on. And a massive thing when we're trying to figure out what we have. They don't absorb water and they can't be suspended in water. Basically, all these three will be down and settled. So we've got our rocks down here, big jaggedy rocks. We're gonna have our sand here, quite finer. And then the silt will often be a tiny layer. And then the clay will be whatever the clay will be. You can see all of these three with the naked eye. But above, the inherent difference with clay is that it absorbs water and it stays suspended in water because the particles are so small. Particles are also inherently different shapes, actually more like platelets, like little fish scales. And what they can do, they can suspend a droplet of water in the center of them. They slide together and they get surface tension and there's actually electrostatic tension between them as well. So they get electrostatically pulled towards each other and there's a surface tension and a bit of a vacuum really. So that's why clay gets sticky and gets muddy. And that is the clearest way for me to explain what's going on in these jars. In case you needed any reminding, yes, Hayden is an incredible teacher. Not only can he make complex ideas easy to understand, but we saw him taking time again and again with attendees to walk them through each step of the process and make sure they could do it themselves. But we're totally happy to chat more. This is a barrel of worms. Just don't want people to toast um, or fall asleep. So, all good. Thank you guys. Thank you for your attention. Woohoo! <laughs> Go natural building.
We're back after lunch. A really good soil class. Everyone's running a little slow because the lunch is delicious. But we're gonna get back to it. We're laying our first unstabilized bags. So let's see how it goes. You're going to lift up, twist, and slide this and push the twist into that hole you made and stepping back. So lift up, step back, and push in. Beautiful. Okay, stabilized versus unstabilized. What exactly does that mean? It's pretty simple. Stabilizing is just the act of adding Portland cement to our evenly distributed mix of clay, sand, and rock. Stabilizing should occur on lower layers, especially the layer where the forms sit, on all buttresses, and to save on cement, you can lay most of a layer unstabilized and switch to a stabilized mix right before you get to the edge of a door or a window form. There are some other things you should stabilize, but we'll get to those once we get higher up. They still got quite a while. That's about really only want about this much of stabilized. So you can sit on here and be a rodeo man. All right. Oh. We're going to have a little middle section of unstabilized, okay, the backs are stabilized. That's about what I'm looking for there. You just got to figure out how to get that corner kind of packed in so it meets here without pushing it back into the bag. Around day three, we started to notice that not only were many of the weekly attendees getting really good at laying bags, but they were also starting to teach others, which was really cool. Watching them become a real team and mentoring daily visitors was the highlight of this workshop for us. We are done with day three, Super Dirty Workshop. Woo! We are rapidly, this wall is growing very quickly. I know. I'm very excited. And we have to climb over it now, it's getting too high. Yeah, we're about to the point where we have to use the door frame. By the way, we have a door frame. Woo! Do you see this? Uh, and yeah, I like. I can't believe how fast we're moving. It's pretty mm. cool. You laid some bag for the first time today? I did, I did. What do you think the difference is? It are? is so much harder than that. Oh, I've ever come done. on! Oh my goodness. <laughs> It uses so much more of all your, you're such at a weird angle and yeah, yep. I can see why you get very physically exhausted by the end of a build. Definitely. Because um, with the hybrid Adobe bucket, I'm just holding it there. I don't True. have to do any maneuvering and rolling it up my body and yeah. and then the twisting the, or the vortexing as you call That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, it's a lot more manhandling than I thought there, there was. Yeah. Definitely. But you did very well. It was Thanks. a perfectly filled bag, perfectly vortexed. You you win. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, I had a good teacher. Um, so what are what's the goal for tomorrow? Tomorrow, I haven't done the exact maths, but I reckon we need to do about four layers a day. I think tomorrow is a four layer day, mm. and then they get smaller as they come in. So no, I think the next more. day can be a five layer. Right, right. The next day can be a six layer. But tomorrow is also when we actually start bringing it 
in because up to this yeah. point we've just gone vertically straight up kind of like how we do hyper <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've been doing very Love similar that. but now we get to start using the power of the arch and bringing it in each step which should be really fun getting that beautiful arch look so good yeah. it's gonna be great i don't know about you but i'm uh a little toasty i'm cooked and uh totally cooked. A, little, a little tired <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're only on day three we got four more days left <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a seven day in a long time, and this is why. <laughs> yeah. We're going to finish strong, though. It's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, but send help for the yes. next few days. Sound good? All right. We'll see bye you guys bye. tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>